She-Hulk was just released on Disney Plus, and my, oh my, oh God, please help us. It's bad. So we'll look at the death of heroes and what it means to us as a society. We'll talk about that and more today on Indie Thinker. Don't forget, today's show is sponsored by our friends over at Element Home Loans. There's a lot of games, there's a lot of gimmicks in the mortgage home loan business. And so if you're looking to refinance or to purchase a new home, you need to go to a name you can trust. And you can do that over at Element Home Loans and at the Kevin Blair team. So go to kevinblairteam.com today where you can get pre-approved for a home loan. Now, some of these guys are gonna try to draw you in with a flashy interest rate only to tell you sometime later that you actually didn't qualify for that rate. And it was all a lie in the first place. You're not going to get that at Element Home Loans or from the Kevin Blair team. You're going to get honesty. You're going to get all of your paperwork up front. And you're going to get all of the answers that you need to all of the questions for your home loan. So what are you waiting for? You need to go to Element Home Loans right now by going to kevinblairteam.com to see how they can help you with your new home. And when you do so, let them know that Indie Thinker sent you. Welcome to the show today, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We're gonna be crushing some echo chambers today, and we're gonna be doing that by combining faith and reason, because in so doing, there's a lot of answers for so much of what we're focusing, or what is going on in our society today. Now, um, before I get to that, I just wanna make sure to mention that this Sunday, we're getting close. Uh, Carl Truman is going to be our guest on the show. Now, Carl Truman is perhaps one of the greatest uh, key thought leaders of our time, specifically in the area of the sexual revolution, in the area of social constructivism, and second wave and third wave feminism, and so much more. His new book, The Rise and Triumph of the Modern Self, is perhaps, perhaps the magnum opus of our time. It needs to be read. He was featured in the new documentary, What is a Woman? And um, just a, just in so many other places, that too many to name, but a key voice and a key thought leader for our age. Now, you may ask yourself, what's second wave feminism? What's uh, the sexual revolution all about? And all of those things. Maybe you've heard the names before and you don't really know, but, but you need to listen to this episode because Carl is gonna explain those things in a way that's really accessible and really important. And suffice to say, if you're wondering to yourself, where does the modern trans ideology come from? Where does the modern feminist ideology come from? Where, do, where does so much of what we're facing right now in society, where do those things come from? Well, the Bible says the curse causeless shall not come. So there is a place that they come from, and Carl Truman can help you identify historically where the things that we're facing presently come from. So suffice to say, it's going to be a great episode. Check it out this Sunday at 8 o'clock. Now, today we're digging into heroes, or at least the lack thereof in society today. I'll never forget teaching a uh, 10th grade, I think it was, um, high school class, uh, history. And we were digging into the cultural revolution of Mao. And somehow or another, we got into uh, who, who were the heroes of the kids that I was teaching. Now, I think we were digging into it because in Mao's cultural revolution, Mao tried to destroy everything from the past to instill or install a new culture, as it were, a communist revolutionary culture that, um, that would not hinder his communist revolution from taking place. And so in the process of that, um, the one thing I thought was a safe guard against some of the the travesty the horror of the communist revolution in china would be people holding on to ideals that we got from the past and then we got into the conversation of heroes and so i stopped the class and i just asked a simple question and i was kind of horrified by the results I asked each and every one of those kids, who are your heroes? Who are the people that you look up to? And this was a Christian school, so I said, you know, I'm, I'm not talking about idolizing people. We don't want to idolize anybody. Um, uh, but but we do need people to look up to. So who are people that, that we can look up to as pillars of virtue, pillars of faith maybe, uh, people that we think have skills and abilities that we admire? Who are, who are your heroes? So I asked them that question. And, you know, I paused a bit because I thought to myself, okay, here we go. We're going to get at least a couple of them to say LeBron James. And I'm just thinking, oh, God. Another fine for LeBron James on the flop right there. But I didn't even get that. 
Um, they, they weren't wise enough to know Michael Jordan, but they didn't even answer LeBron James. They, they actually, not a single one of the kids actually answered in the class that day that they had someone that they could look up to. Not even their parents, their mom or their dad, or a coach, or even a social influencer on social media for crying out loud, thank God not, but, but nobody. There, now, this isn't an exaggeration. There was not a single kid in the class that told me that they had a hero. And I thought to myself about the implications of such a thing. Now, why is that? And what can we do about it? Um, is hopefully what we're going to solve today as we talk about that. But I think at least I know in part why heroes are a dying breed in our age, especially at a time where Disney is so interested in portraying heroes to us. A while back, I did a, a kind of like a review, as it were, of Turning Red. I actually tried to watch the beginning of the movie without, uh, I guess, knowing enough about it, frankly, uh, with my kids. And it took me all of about uh, five minutes into the movie to turn it off, not only because of the way the kids were talking to their parents, but also because of the the subject matter that was being discussed. Now, um, my kids are six and eight, and they were that age at the time of the viewing of of that movie. And I got some feedback from my review of Turning Red. Well, this is a Pixar movie. It's not necessarily a Disney movie, even though Disney owns Pixar. It's intended to be for teenagers, and it's just trying to discuss, you know, um, on a, in a level-headed way, but also in a way that kids can understand the changes and the things that that young girls in their teenage years are going to go through. So clearly not a movie for kids. So no wonder you turned it off. And so I got comments kind of like that. Now, suffice to say, I, I don't even think the movie was for teenagers because you've got the panda um, screaming at the top of their lungs, or at least the girl who is also the panda in the movie, screaming at the top of their lungs, my panda, my choice. Um, and trying to intersperse adult themes like that throughout the movie. But... Okay, point taken. So Turning Red was supposedly for a more teenage audience, but Disney isn't just sticking to that recipe for Pixar for older kids and Disney for younger kids because they're clearly trying to target children in their latest Disney special. Because Disney just released the This Is Me Pride Celebration Spectacular, which is clearly supposed to aim and target children. I'll let you see it here for yourself. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the Disney Plus This Is Me Pride Celebration Spectacular. I'm Nina West, and I'm here to guide you through a magical, musical, and meaningful celebration of the LGBTQ plus community. If you're anything like me, you've always been a fan of the Disney classics. Now, it's not that it's just gross that a bunch of middle-aged men are prancing around in dresses, supposedly as entertainment for children, but Disney is the unfortunately, at this point in time, still the premier place for family and child entertainment. And they're the ones who are responsible, whether they like it or not, for developing and creating heroes for us. And they've tried to do this, and that's why they bought the Marvel franchise. And they are the number one leader in painting heroes for us today. Now, they're doing that, obviously, through comic books, which is a silly attempt at that. But nonetheless, it is the picture of the modern-day hero. And Disney just recently released the most ridiculous and unfortunate rendition of Heroes for us in the series She-Hulk that just dropped on Disney+. Plus. Now, I need to show you this to fully illustrate for you just how sickening, ridiculous, and sycophantic this show actually is. So here's a quick clip of our esteemed She-Hulk whining and complaining to male Hulk. Here's the thing, Bruce. I'm great at controlling my anger. Mm. I do it all the time. When I'm catcalled in the street, when incompetent men explain my own area of expertise to me, I do it pretty much every day because if I don't, I will get called emotional or difficult or I might just literally get murdered. So I'm an expert at controlling my anger because I do it infinitely more than you. Now, I have to say a couple of things about that clip. So first of all, way to give in to gender stereotypes at the same time trying to present yourself as a feminist because, I mean, is it at least a little ironic that you have a woman bitching about all of the things that she experiences at work? So maybe I should just say, 
Maybe you should leave your job and go back to the kitchen where you won't experience any of those great difficulties of incompetent people in the workplace. Now, also, too, I, I have to say that uh, for a hero, uh, she does the one thing that is the most annoying thing a person can do. You want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? And that is to incessantly and insipidly complain about minor inconveniences. Now, uh, this is a superhero again, so go with me on this, if you will. Can you imagine Superman lamenting the fact that he is part of the visually impaired community and how there's not enough representation for him. Or how about this? Could you imagine Robin publicly shaming someone, screaming at them in the city streets because someone misgendered him? Or maybe Mr. Fantastic crying out for more attention to the body positivity movement. Everybody of every shape should be recognized, including 90 foot tall, um, three inch wide people. Or maybe this, Batman finalizing his in-game countermeasures for each and every one of these sycophantic heroes because they've gotten so fat and happy complaining in their prosperity. Perhaps the third and most important thing is way to be a narcissist. No wonder we have a lack of heroes anymore in society. I mean, congratulations. No one has ever dealt with anything like you've dealt with before, and you win the prize. Uh, you know how to handle your anger way better than male Hulk because you are so oppressed. You know, you, you used to think about a time when, when heroes actually enjoyed the fact that they were heroes and appreciated the fact that perhaps their self-centered attempts at trying to act like a victim seemed a little bit stupid in the face of actual real problems, third world problems. You know, congratulations, you won the oppression Olympics and you have come out on top and nobody is more oppressed than you. Meanwhile, the rest of the world looks on in starvation, in hunger, and says, I understand your pain because of your unwanted compliments from people that you don't know. So, of course, starving children in the world are supposed to watch She-Hulk and think to themselves, my oh my, how hard she must have it. And no one has ever had it as hard as she had. But this is why no one can relate to the heroes of today. They're self-indulgent, self-centered, enjoying incredible prosperity while sycophantically complaining about it. They were just like us, except with one special caveat. They had special powers that gave them the responsibility to be better, not bitter, and not to try to complain more or to try to draw attention to themselves with how great their oppression was compared to everybody else's oppression. No, they drew us together with that one exception that they had great power and they understood that with great power comes great responsibility. But you didn't see that one coming. So, no, they weren't great at whining. No, our heroes were better than that. They, they understood their responsibility to try to draw us and bring us all together. Now heroes grovel to find the lowest position possible to show their woke bona fides. Meanwhile, kids watch this filth and walk away depressed, uninterested, and weaker. Now, where does this come from? I would be missing an opportunity to talk about something that happened in history that I think is important for us to understand the ideology behind some of what's happening in our present day modern Marvel movies and in other hero movies. Um, so there's a term called schadenfreude and schadenfreude is simply a term that means enjoying the pain of your enemies or taking enjoyment out of the pain of your enemies. And so this concept was something that was promoted by the Frankfurt School and other critical theorists like Adorno and Horkheimer. Specifically, these guys invaded Hollywood back in the 1940s and they started a trend that would trickle down into our present. They would start the schadenfreude trend, which ultimately was this idea that in order to change culture, what we need to do is we need to change our heroes. We need to take those people that we once celebrated, those people that we once enjoyed, and we need to turn the good guys into the bad guys. Um, and we need to allow people to enjoy the pain of these people and their, and their failures and their fallings from grace. That's the way that we will turn over and, and create revolution in society since so much of our understanding and our perception of society comes from movies and from entertainment. Well, then what we need to do is we need to show heroes in society that are not heroes. This will be a key factor in undermining the existing conditions 
of all things. Because if we can undermine what heroes look like, then maybe we can undermine everything else. If we can say that the reason you're successful is simply because you've oppressed other people, then it, then we can take every single hero that we've ever known and we can show how weak they truly are. If we can take heroes and show that the only way that they got to the top was because they oppressed other people, well then what we can do is we can show the failures and the shortcomings of society. We can expose them and then we can turn it all around, burn it to the ground, and then we can create a new society in our own image. So the pathway to that is to make everyone bitter at our heroes and to show them as weak rather than strong. I'm glad Johnny's okay, because I'm not. Now. You may be able to see this in so much of what has happened lately. As much as I like the Batman movies, I have to say, uh, Christopher Nolan was was one of the first people to really do this in terms of big budget cinematic superhero films to show that, well, hey, you know, the Joker is just as evil as Batman, except for one exception. He just doesn't shoot people. But otherwise, Batman's emotionally scarred and Joker is emotionally scarred. They're both emotionally scarred weirdos and basically cut from the same cloth with just little few exceptions. It's this degradation of the hero into something that doesn't even look heroic anymore. Now, I'll be the first to admit that I liked The Dark Knight and um, appreciated certainly Batman Begins and liked that whole Nolan trilogy. I thought that um, there were some important concepts and things throughout and ultimately it redeems that idea of of the hero being just as weak as, as everybody else. But ultimately, this is the modern day hero that is being passed down to us. They're weak, they're spoiled, they're sycophantic, they're nauseating, and not easy to root for anymore. So although this Marxist critical theory attempt to infiltrate Hollywood back in the 1940s seems a little far-fetched, you can see it today in modern leftist ideology, which has captivated most of our institutions and clearly has captivated Disney. This is why for the life of them, they cannot seem to create a hero that we actually want to get behind. All they can do is promote gender and promote identity and promote how different these individuals are and promote certain groups rather than promoting the thing that brings us all together, our common humanity and common morality. So this is why I think the death of heroes in society is becoming a bigger and bigger problem. And it's borne out in the fact that not just my class, but more and more kids are finding it harder and harder and harder to find anybody that they can look up to that is really worth celebrating. And it's at least important for us to ask, what are the implications of that? What are the implications of a young person not having a Michael Jordan that they can look up to? Now here's what we can do in the midst of Disney absolutely destroying heroes on our watch is we can stop watching Disney. We can stop going to their parks. We can quit entertaining their, their leftist ideology and we can quit entertaining their gender bending ideology which they wish to shove down the throat of our kids. I mean, frankly, at this point in time, if you're still watching Disney, I question whether or not you really have morals and whether or not there is anything that will move you from your perch of, of demanding entertainment over truth and comfort over correctness. So I really question that. I, and at the, least at this point in time, you're probably not watching this episode anymore if that's you. But for those of you who are and realize Disney Plus needs to be canceled yesterday, here's some things that we can do. We can bring back heroes that don't suck. I mean, Eric July just got done raising $1.7 million in four days for anti-woke superheroes. If you don't know Eric July, I encourage you to follow him on social media. He's um, a young black guy that is not only a, uh, a cartoon, sorry, a comic book artist, but also a, um, a cultural commentator. And he's got some really great things to say. Um, but, but there are some people who are not settling for Disney's woke and foolish superheroes. There are some people to stand behind. I would also encourage you to get a Daily Wire subscription because they're going to be getting into kids content pretty soon here. And at least you won't have to throw your money at people that, that hate you and hate your kids and have more of an agenda to, to shove an ideology down your kid's throat than to actually entertain them. Now, you may say that that's true of the Daily Wire too, but I'm, but one way or the other, there is one agenda that is way, me, way more healthy for your kids. Um, and, and so you need to go promote the Daily Wire and you need to cancel your Daily Plus, uh, Disney Plus subscription. 
But then maybe you need to go one step further and you need to bite the bullet and you need to go to Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure rather than going to Disney World yet again. My family and I just did this. We were going to go to Disney World and quite frankly, not only are the ticket costs incredible, but um, their institution no longer deserves to be supported by us. So we decided to do something else and we had a better time. And we're so glad that we did it. And if you'll step away from Disney, it's possible that there can be room for repentance and they can see the error of their ways. But if not, at least you'll be doing this. At least you'll be investing in something that has a greater chance of not being Disney. Now, you may say to yourself, well, do you think Universal's much better read than Disney is? And to that, I would say, yes, I do. Um, I don't believe that you can point to the show on NBC Universal that is trying to indoctrinate small children into trans ideology and showing adult men cross-dressing uh, for a spectacular. Now, I, I forgot to mention this at the beginning of the show, too, but it shouldn't, uh, shouldn't go without mentioning that, you know, I can't remember the last time that Disney put together a Bible Christian um, Holy Spirit spectacular for kids. Nope, they only are interested in doing drag queen story hour spectacular for children. So shame on them, but shame on you if you're not interested in actually better for your kids. The only way to go about doing that is to start investing your time, your energy, and your money in other places. Now, unlike this, perhaps the whole idea of heroes is far-fetched anyway and misplaced. Maybe real heroes are not the ones who are faster than speeding bullets and can leap tall buildings in a single bound. Perhaps real heroes are actually just average, everyday people that do extraordinary things in the face of adversity, but don't necessarily have extraordinary powers. Maybe it looks more like veterans or firefighters or police officers. Maybe these guys are the true heroes, and they're the ones that we need to focus on. And there's never been a better time to do that. Because Disney sure as heck is not going to serve up any type of heroes that you should let your kids watch. So, maybe this is a great time for us to really focus on the real heroes and the things that matter most. And the things that we would want to see exemplified in our kids. Because belly aching, complaining, and narcissism sure are not the characteristics of the kind of heroes I want my kids looking up to. Well, you don't have to think like me, but you do have to think for yourself. So, I'd love to hear what you think comment down below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you next time. You can catch brand new episodes of Indie Thinker with Reed Uberman every Monday and weekly bonus episodes to keep you thinking throughout the week. But you have to subscribe and click the bell to be notified when new episodes drop. If you enjoy this content, make sure to like this video and share it with friends.